Yeah, why me, babe? So, um, this is an easy question for me. Um, I think that when you ask any man, I think that when when a man comes to the point to where he wants to spend the rest of his life with someone, it's actually a m- multiple things, and it's not one thing that you can actually explain. So, I can't give you a definite answer and say it was this, it was this, it was that, but I can just tell you just as we build collectively, it was so many things that I didn't want to lose. So, when you have more to lose than to gain when you're dealing with the opposite sex, then you know it's time to settle down and become a husband, find a wife, things like that. Yep. Studio Live. Studio Live. Studio Live. Studio Live. You know, the one thing I, I want to get across, I think that with the accessibility of um, Pro Tools or, or Logic or the equipment that's out there, anybody can go buy it. So we can all, you, you can go buy everything that I got and, and you can take it home and you can record yourself. When I'm sitting in this chair, I'm first listening to the music and I'm enjoying it. And it goes as far as even the bad versions of the music, right? I'll sit here and I'll bob like crazy, but then that what that does is it translates into my brain as what feel I'm getting from it. And then that then communicates to me what I should do in the mix and with the, the vocals and things like that for me to get it to where it needs to be for it to communicate what I'm feeling. When you talk about artist development, it always starts with how passionate are they about it? You know, uh, I think as a producer, the worst thing you can do is or the worst feeling is working with somebody and then you look up, you know, a couple months later and they know where to be found. That if you just focus on being an artist and let the people that want to be an engineer engineer your music properly and um, there's no cutting corners, I think we'll uh, get not better results in the sound. Sometimes if you're, if you're out there and you're recording yourself and it might not be, you know, um, the best in quality, then, um, and you put that out there, let's say you got fans off what you're doing. I think that's more dangerous than anything because now those fans have a lesser standard. I just wanna tell you, anybody that's ever mixed down anything and you really enjoy it, you'll never be satisfied. (laughs) You'll never be satisfied, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that satisfaction. You're looking for that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's actually where you look for that satisfaction. I can do the seven, and then you and D Mac can do those two. You got the, you got the, this is a 10 to two, this is a four hour. Okay. And then this is a, a 10 to 12, which will get D Mac out of here about 12.30 so he can go home. Yeah, 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 sure. That'll work. Cool. This is wonderful. I ate it all. I'm trying to see if somebody got some more. Can I get some now? I just want one leg, bro. Who is that right there? Me a leg. You not eating him? Fuck him. Well, as you can see, we have stingy people <laughs> in, in, the, in the game, but it's okay. He had the chance to get that too. He took it down. Oh, oh okay. He took um, it down. He so, said, nah, I need that one. <clears throat> All in, that's Ooh. our first hit. It got uh, Lost. 8 million. Lost. 8 million streams, views, all of that. Um, we record that in Brace Studio. And uh, at first, see, this was our, that was our first song. We actually tried this style mm-hmm. that we got now. Like, we was like, all right. We don't really gotta think too hard. We ain't gotta do no hood. We just gonna go in and just and do what we do. Do whatever we wanna do. And so I remember Brace was like, "Man, bring that back as the hook, man. You bring it it's back as the hook. Supposed to be a hook, man. And we like, it's a hook. We like, nah, bro. Uh-huh. We just kicking and we having fun, bro. Brace used to shit. argue with us every day. He used to argue every time we catch studio, man. Y'all, man, y'all supposed to do that, man. I'm talking about y'all need this mix, man. That <laughs> need to be mixed, <laughs> bro. Yeah, no, we put bro, it out. We good. put out the music. You know what I'm and saying? Go crazy. You're like, man, I ain't even know, but y'all really fooled me wrong. Hey, what was his favorite thing? Y'all play this in the club. The y'all play this in the bust. club. It's going. It's going. The speaker's going bust. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn, damn. What it time? Go, all right, go. You 
want bread, bitch, I want the whole flow. The whole loaf. And it's winter, let me put on my coat. If you listen close, you hear that they're not really mumbling and they're saying a whole lot, but you have to listen a certain way. And when you hear it, it blows you away. I, I can appreciate it so much because when I, I hear some of it, not all of it, but some of it, I'm like, these dudes is just it, it are crazy with, with how they are so creative with the way that they're able to express themselves in words and lyricism, but do it in a way where they now make the sound the music. The way they say the words is the music on top of what they're saying. And if you don't listen right, you'll miss it. And it's just not for you. Uh, now we all one unit. You know, he he a mix for us. Uh, but we need a beat. We need something done. We all work all together. Uh, um, so the sound that you hear, whether you hear, whether you hear Zay and them, whether you hear Bankroll Freddy, whether you hear some coming up out of Cincy Molly, some something coming out of Gutter, Gutter Studio, we all kind of delivering a great product at this point. We ain't gonna throw no slick shots, but you know, we was doing, we was at other studios that was, you know. And they just wasn't getting they it. Wasn't, they wasn't giving us the sound, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They weren't giving us sound and nobody believed in what was going on, so. But Brace. But we made brace, brace. Man, by the grace of God, we made brace. He got his right. He believed in us. And he believed in us. He gave us a few deals here and there to get us where we need to be. And, you know, so, yeah, here we are now, bought a whole studio. Jump out the spot, jump out the spot, like checking the box, like checking the box. I need a loop de loop. Sometimes you just gotta be quiet and listen. It's not about what I've learned over the years and what I'm learning on the technical side, but it's more so what they want and, and high def, high def gang as a unit is a, is a perfect example of that. I remember uh, recording one of their biggest records, All In, and man, we we really had like a a back and forth argument about the record. I wanted them to put a hook on the record. They was looking at me like I'm the old dude in the room. Like they was really like, brace, just do, just push the buttons, bro. We good. JG came to the studio. And he listened to the song and then he tapped me on my shoulder. He said, Brace, let them do what they do. And, and the song growed and went crazy. And it, it was one of, like I say, it was one of their bigger records. And I remember calling Zay after seeing the response and, and, and literally apologizing and just saying, like, I was wrong. With him being someone that used to play um, professional sports, he has that competitive nature to where okay oh that's good hey what else can we do to try to improve that hey that hey, that sounds good but hey what, why did you why did you want to do that you know he's he's asked me things and like i said i've only been doing this a couple of years he's been doing this for way longer than i have and he'll still ask me things so that just lets me know that number one you never finish learning um you know and number two that you just like i said you just have to be humble about a lot of things so yeah working with him is just it's it's really an ease you know definitely like a big brother to me already um, with all the things that he's already shown me. When, when I first met him, he had, um, in college, he told me he had a studio in his, in his uh, dorm room. When we were living in an apartment, he had a studio in there. Um, when we moved into our house prior to this one, he had a studio, in, a studio outside in the shed and then a studio behind this house. So I was like, oh my God, like, he don't care where he do music as long as he do it. So. When I saw him doing that, I'm like, wow, like this guy is determined to be uh, the best engineer. So like, that's what I saw in him and just the potential to be great. So we're still here today. How about that? Every day I have to fight <laughs> to prove my love. Every day. <laughs> that's okay. You're a fighter. I wouldn't call this the, the birth a BFM studio, but this uh, room right here is where the clientele really picked up and, and uh, as far as the city of Little Rock and, and the state of Arkansas, I started to get a little notoriety for what I was doing. And um, so now I come out here and just reflect, you know what I mean? I, um, I look around sometimes, I, I leave this here because it reminds me of um, my football career, you know, I had a a, a good college career and I started my professional career with uh, Green Bay. It didn't work out. Um, I moved on to Canada, played a few years and um, ultimately it didn't work out. And uh, you know, a lot of people consider that as failure because you 
you know, the notoriety didn't come with it. But again, I did something that a lot of people uh, try to do, and I was able to do that. So I look over here, and sometimes I see, you know, lost potential because I had the talent, I had the speed, I had the size. The education wasn't there, and just the potential was lost. Then I come over here and I look on this side of the room and I look at the success of what I've done musically. You know, you got AMP, you got Ray J, um, you got Rocco, you got Key Glock, that's DJ No Name. Yeah, so, and there's a lot of, of the who's who of Lil Rock. That's Lil JJ. Mm -hmm. So things like that. And this is just kind of the birth of of uh, BFM as far as the, if we talking locally. Hey, it's a funny story. You're like, you, you think of the NFL, the letters, it's very powerful. But I literally look at it and see not for long. You know what I mean? And, and it doesn't last forever. And mine was short lived, but you know what I mean? I think I said this before, it's, it's something that I'm proud of because a lot of people don't don't get to do it. So the, the situation with um, playing professional football, you can, you know, you, you want to rise, right? And when you get to the, the a stone wall, you either going to go down, you know what I mean? And, and like we talked about it being failure or for me, I tend to step aside and then keep going forward and try my best to go up. Um, I learned a lot and through it all, uh, I think family is, is way more important. You want me to start? I'd like her to start. Oh. She speaks so eloquently. <laughs> Well, um, this has been a journey. So I, I was talking to Brace the other day and I told him a little bit that I believe since you started working here, this has been therapy for our family and our home. Um, and just a little backstory, Rico, my husband met Brace about in June, the mm -hmm. end of June. And that's when he started working at BFM Studios. And um, about a month prior is when we lost our daughter. Um, she passed away. So it was kind of like a, a weird moment to start working so heavily. He has a full-time job and doing this. Um, but I didn't know what to expect as far as what BFM Studios would mean for our family, what that would look like. Um, I thought it was time away when we needed to stay together. Um, we just went through probably the most tragic time of our lives um, but it's been amazing it's been beautiful because it's been therapy I believe like for you and even for me to see you dive so heavily into something that you love and um, just focus your energy on something like positive other than just like sitting in the sadness of it all what do you think I, I agree um, I think I, not actively I never saw it out as that I think it just um you know a guy tends to get become busy whenever um, trauma happens so I think that's been my process not that I haven't dealt with it we've been to therapy um, and we've dealt with it together we talk about it um, often maybe not as often as we used to but what really is uh, a blessing for me is that my wife comes here very often. She is either in that room working on her YouTube videos or she's in here sitting alongside me. I think I'm the only one who really has my wife here like consistently. Yeah. They everyone knows her. They don't they're not surprised to see her anymore. And I remember when she first used to come here, they used to be like, um, are you an artist? Or something? You know, they, <laughs> are they, they you a producer? Know. But now there's no doubt yeah. who is she who she's with, why she's here and that she belongs. It's yeah. really awesome. Beef is at the Crystal Palace. I think it was Friday. Could have been Saturday. Keep talking this bullshit. I just need to add it. Watch in. Keep this. Yes, sir. Good morning, America. Don't know got a, a real story, unique girl. way of recording. My nigga Thor, he from Kelly. Met him in Memphis at the Crystal Palace. I think it was Friday, could have been Saturday. Keep talking this plush shit, I just need to add it. He dropped him on Thursday. One more time, one more time.
Friday could have been Saturday. Keep talking this bullshit. I just need an ad. He drop him on Thursday. They send me a trek and they landed on Saturday. My little bitch go grab it. He give me like two weeks. He need a little package. Yeah. Could have been Saturday. Keep talking this bullshit. I just need an ad. He drop him on Thursday. They send me a trek and they landed on Saturday. My little bitch go grab it. He give me like two weeks. He need a little package. This nigga too, he straight, straight out the mud. mud. This nigga from Bumpton, they call him Big Blood. We six months in, they still coming in. Dang grew up pre roll, moon rocks and pins. I broke this shit down and split it with my friend. Never met beating with family again. We like a year and six months. Nigga been doing that real shit, like, it's just like, could come from where we from and shit. Like, you know, we from Arkansas, so, you know, too many people don't get the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to be here. Like, the rap, the rap shit was the biggest thing that ever happened to a nigga, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to go through a lot of shit, like lost a lot of people in the streets and shit. So like, it was one of the ways a nigga can express himself. It was one of the first ways I can express myself for going in the studio. So I was like, shit, fuck it, like, I'ma do this shit, like, I'ma do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It relief for nigga. So like, shit, we just took it serious. The streets fuck with it, the people fuck with it. So like, nigga just keep this shit going. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have some people might say, it ain't, it ain't good music, they don't like it, but like, do you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to do the music, do the music. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got to worry about what nobody say. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, man, I just do it. As an engineer, you have to know who you're dealing with, and then you got to kind of progress, too. You got to evolve, and you got to evolve just as quick as the music is, or or you'll get, you'll get pegged as that guy that's kind of stuck in the box, or you, you're the old engineer, or you, you're doing things the old way. So you got to continue to to evolve. Like say for instance, um, Eastside Shorty. That, you know, it's totally different. Like the way he do his thing, the way he record, it is totally different. Like he's probably, you know, and it's not to step on nobody's toes. You know what I mean? Because I do work with a lot of people, but I see a lot of people punch in, meaning they come in, they don't have no content on paper and, and they go, you know, bar from bar or they go uh, four at a time and they literally using the microphone <clears throat> and the booth as they pen and pad, right? It's unique, it's, it's the new thing and everybody doing it. And, and um, but Eastside literally does 12s, you know, eight, he'll, he'll go, he'll do a, a complete eight and a, or a complete 12. You know, he'll hold his head down for, you know, maybe five minutes at the max. And then he say, I'm ready. East side is different. It's just, it's just different the way you do it. Like, drop your head for a few minutes and be like, come on, I'm ready. Yep. And then, and then the fact that, that the way you do it is like, it's not like, like a punch in to me. Like what I see every day is like two bars, three bars, four bars. You doing eights and twelves. I'm thinking for five minutes, like, come on, man, who's doing it? I try to do six at a time. Yeah, wow. that's crazy, that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. It's crazy, man. I, man. Six at a time. I had they, man, I went to Atlanta, man, when I was working on the mixtape I dropped with Drama. And I had bought beats from Zaytoven. And shit, we bought the beats, and bro played the beats. I'm like, shit, all right, let me write something to it. And niggas like, hell no, nah, bro, just go in that bitch and say whatever you. Well, that's what made me first get on there. No, look like, back. And I ain't shit. I ain't wrote nothing right. ever since then. Right. I just been out the head. Right. 10, 15 minutes. I'm 20 minutes. I'm through with some songs. Never use a pen again. Yeah. Right. Right. I ain't look fat. Yeah. <laughs> well, bet, man, we got to tap in soon, man. Yep. Lock in and get a session on. Bro. You already know. I've been down since the backyard day. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. This is the backyard. When I first saw him, I saw potential in him. I can do something with this guy. Dude, I, had to, <laughs> I can do some stuff with this guy. Is, he you has can, friends, you know. I like a guy with friends. If you can count how many times I have to talk her off the ledge, this relationship <laughs> would have been over. I married him because we have a lot in common. We like to do a lot of the same things. We like watching movies. We like, uh, we both like to talk. <laughs> So um, that was one of the main things that I loved about him, that he can have a good conversation. You know, you want somebody that you can talk to. And so that's what I love about him. He can uh, have a good conversation. So. It's been, I, I think what's cool about being the, like Brace making this like a family environment is that 
I can come be with him when he's at the studio. So I know a lot of people, a lot of women probably struggle with that when their husbands are musicians or artists and they're away all the time. But uh, the cool part about it is I could just come in here, sit down for a few hours. Sometimes we'll have dinner together in here. After you get off work, I'll bring his dinner. We'll sit here, hang out, listen to some music, new artists, and then we'll go home. We want to big them up. We want to push them to the highest level. We want them to have the best sound. And we want our engineers to be capable of doing that. So we grow and we, we study, we learn, you know what I mean? And we at BFM Studio, we create a standard that, you know, we want everybody to understand why we doing it. And we want them to appreciate it while we are trying to get to the same place. We all want to be big. Working with Brace, going to his dorm room in Jonesboro, driving all the way up there and then trying to make it back for class in the morning for, for school. Uh, it was like, it evolved into, okay, let me learn what he doing. You know what I'm saying? Let me learn what Brace face doing. And then I took that and was like, oh, okay, let me go to recording school. So I left and went, went to a recording school in Phoenix at the Conservatory of Recording Arts. And so I just took the steps, you know, I progressed. It wasn't like everything came at once. It was like, I just did the steps all the way up until here right now. Like really, I just was like a, just a music person. I always just like listening to it. Like my stepdaddy used to play all these old records. Like when we was young, like Ray Parker Jr. And, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and all that, you know, and then I started, you know, listening to Boosie and Tupac as I got up in age, and No Limit, you know, people like them. But I always been a good writer, though, you know, just just writing, that was like my, my coping skill. From growing up as a kid to growing up, to be able to see the stories in my head, I could, I see the shit before I see it. It's, it's like hard to explain, like, I could hear a beat, and I could hear me on the beat, but it ain't no words on it. So to bring that to life and actually be able to express myself and what I'm thinking and what I went through and, and, and what I seen, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the truth. I had to be nine, 10 years old. Uh, I was riding with my uncle. He had like a 73 colors, old school, clean, all bells and whistles, whistles original. And uh, I would listen to Eight Ball, Almost Famous. And I was like, man, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. So the next day I went to school. I had wrote that night. Actually, that night I had wrote his lyrics down. And I went to school and recited them on the playground. And, you know, like, everybody was around me. They thought it was me. So I was like, I love the reaction. So I was like, hey, man, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. So eventually I started writing my own. Yeah, I've been doing it ever since. Too Heavy coming extremely soon. Me and Trill Loke, like, Too Heavy, you know. Two of the biggest guys in the state, Arkansas, baby. Yeah, Trill. man, we got that me and this bitch cooking up that Too Heavy. Trill Loke, see, man, the heaviest niggas in the state, man. We ain't speaking on no money, man. We speaking on this solid foundation. Everything organic, everything for real. Ain't none of this shit here fake made up, man. We can't do no script, no script. Man, we got dang on me. I hit up. Uh, man, I've been hearing C Mary rap, man, and shit. I like his style, you know what I'm saying? I hit him up on some get on this song. Shit, he hit me back with a song. Both songs with some hits. We like, man, this shit too heavy, man. It, hey, man, we, and he like, that's it. Too heavy. We, we mixtape too heavy. So shit, we ran from there. Too heavy. Everything too heavy. We ain't doing nothing petty. Nothing petty. Everything too heavy. Man, lately I ain't been getting no sleep. Like, it's been on go. I've been in here like every day this month. So like, what's today? November what? 26th. November 26th. Out of 26 days this month, we've probably been here 20. So, I'm just on go, man. Trying to make it, trying to make it happen. Trapping and losing the beat. I think my daughter gonna eat. I ain't no sense to beat. Wake a nigga up and be sleep. I get in there and sleep. You want to be with me? Catch you at the BP. <laughs> Chopper make it check right. me. Make your whole team flee. I catch your body and flee. I'm gone, cuz. You hear me? <laughs> I gotta go, man. Hit one of my niggas out of town, man. I ain't gonna lay low, man. What I mean, my home. I just go in the refrigerator and get what I want. Just like the crib. How much you gonna charge me for this, Bryce? 
It's on the house today. It's on the house today, see? <laughs> I got him. It's on camera. That's why. It's on camera. Man, no Capri Suns is over like 12. Uh, right now, we are uh, working on that No Sleep. It's uh, Trill and C-Man. They came together and uh, formed what's called Too Heavy. And uh, it's real heavy, real talk. Like, so everything they're doing is heavy. And uh, my job is to just bring that out. Make sure they weigh you down. I've been up for some days lately. I ain't been getting no sleep. Dealing with the hunger low. 80 30s got me geek. She act in the city public, but I know that she'll free. Oh, murder with the mafia. Yeah, they won't know if you don't speak. Thumbing through some old messages. Bitch, how you change on me? When I speak up, nigga, listen. You can't put the blame on me. Been in the trap, I add up bitches. You can put the gang on me. Big old photo when I'm in public, bro. Don't think it ain't on me. I went from ash to classic, I ain't have shit but pass. Stepped on the floor with greatest. Pulling the toy ain't at me. I fuck with on the attic. Trap by the creek, what's happening? Trap been doing gymnastics. Work, gon' jump out the tip. Pockets was looking real slim, so I ain't know nothing about the trip. I know ass did it the clip. No rolling for weeks. Roll Trap and right. listen to beats. I feel my dog, they gon' eat. I ain't no sense to compete. Wake a nigga up if you sleep. I get it in in the sleep. You want the beef, we can meet. Catch me at the BP. Chop up, make you track me. Make your whole team flee. I catch your body and flee. This bitch, you look for we on go, we no sleep. We ain't getting no sleep. We at the studio every day. We tend to our kids every day. We got damn be on the road every day. I mean, we ain't getting no sleep, man. It, it, it was just dead. We had, I think, man, matter of fact, we was in there, we like, man, when the last time I got some good sleep? I was like, man, I ain't getting no sleep. Quiz said he ain't getting no sleep. She, she mad, see, man, see, I've been up for some days lately. I ain't been getting no sleep. And shit, that's it. Up next on Studio Live. It's not something that you could ever own and you're not making yourself stand out from anyone. But here you have a place where you can come to and it's a one-stop shop. You have you you have the ability to come in here, create a song from scratch and have it be your own and no one else has it. And then like the drivers get out and they start arguing and stuff. It was just crazy. But they got back in the car and we left. Right. Well, you, I we, kept the I kept this relationship. Women have to do that. They have to you know, put it in their ear like, hey, I will leave. Like, it's no problem. So they can get, you know, do what they need to do to make it right. But anyway, like I was saying, I saw potential in him. And so I made sure that he was exactly what I saw, a man that can get out there and hustle. Like, when I first met him, he had, <laughs> what was that? They said, turn the phones off. 